Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is my new playlist called Game Development of the Island. And I have videos here listed from the top to the bottom in proper order from the beginning to the current video that you're watching now of the game development. So definitely check those videos out. They're about 30 to 40 minutes long. I do talk quite a lot through it, but those videos are sped up to about four times. So that way I don't bore you too much, but I do slow down in certain sections so I can show you certain areas and things that I've created. So that way I can take a closer look at it. But uh, there's quite a lot of good information on how to start uh, developing your own uh, level for your game development, or even just creating a, a simple scene. I'm uh, going to be covering pretty much a lot of stuff uh, from vegetation to creating landscapes to setting up the scenes to uh, creating ocean and uh, obviously uh, doing some lighting and characters animations and things like that will be done all in the future. And also if you would like to have subtitles on, all of these videos are supported with the following languages that are listed here. I have Arabic, Chinese, German, Italian. Hindi, Japanese, Portuguese, Spanish, Russian, and Swedish. And of course, if your language is not listed, you can, you're more than welcome to list your language in the comments, and I will can get into and translate some of those videos for you as well. Uh, just keep that in mind. It takes me a while to do that since I'm doing that all by myself. I use a program to translate all this, but it does take time. So when I do release the new videos, it takes me about 24 hours, sometimes to 48 hours to translate all of those. Uh, since I'm doing everything myself. All right, I will begin by placing a different type of landscape material. This is Fern 03, and this was previously used on my other projects for the level design. And I used a grass type on here, and actually I've used this in this project as well. And I didn't really like the outcome of it, since the grass type, you will notice every time I paint, it will disappear on the screen and then will reappear every time I uh, brush, uh, paint with a brush and it takes some time for it to calculate that. You can see that at the top they're disappearing and reappearing. So all what I'm doing right now is just simply painting in the areas that I want this new type of a foliage to spawn and even though it's called Fern 03 I'm going to be using some heavy jungle vegetation on this instead uh, and again this is might be even temporary as well just because I would like to use that for visual purposes. So we're going to use uh, these jungle plants. Let me go ahead and find them. They're from Tropical Jungle Pack, I believe. Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and change the Fur Note 2 to Jungle Plants. This was my another procedural box that I previously used. And if I open it up, it should be empty since I don't really have anything in there, I believe. I don't. But we'll go ahead and place that right away into procedural foliage folder in my world outliner so that way everything is nicely and organized. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste the scale and the location for my jungle plants from the fern since I already have it in place. Now you notice how it's very skinny and tall and that is because my fern has the rotation at zero. And my jungle ones rotation at uh, I believe was at zero. Okay, so it's yeah, you can see that the rotation is at negative 84 degrees. That's why. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset that real quick. Now it should be the right size. I'm also gonna go ahead and set all of them to movable, uh, the mobility, so that way the lighting. I don't have to recalculate all this all the time. And let's go ahead and open up my Fern 01, and we're gonna go ahead and also open up our jungle plant procedural box and I'm going to select about six of those or maybe, maybe even seven array elements and I'm going to go ahead and open up my foliage box that I've previously created and put all these plants in there again they could be temporary in there maybe permanently I'll keep those six in there but I think separating them individually will be a little bit easier or maybe even kind of spread them around or maybe duplicate another procedural foliage box and then work with that later since the more you add the harder it gets and again it can be sometimes a little bit difficult with these procedural foliage boxes so let's go ahead and continue painting this fern 3 and you will notice that there's also a rock appearing it's a just a 2d texture it's not a 3d or anything like that so as of right now i'm going to be just placing that down and then once we have vegetation you probably won't even see that 
but again for visuals it doesn't look too bad and again I'm gonna go ahead and start adding some of these different settings for procedural foliage of these plants I'm gonna go ahead and open all of them at once you'll see that at the top it says six foliage type instances and it helps me uh, to save some time because some of these settings will be used uh, for all of them, uh, for example, placing them on a particular landscape material, uh, they're all going to sp be spawning on Ferno 3, so there is no reason for me to go through each individual procedural uh, foliage type, uh, and it's easier for me to select all of them and set up all these settings first, then go indivi to each individual and then change that. Now, of course, when you open all of them at once, you can see individual uh, parameters for like procedural uh, collisions and scales and growth and things like that because they could be different from one another and then therefore you'll have to go into individual thing and then change it unless you want to keep everything the same so that being said let's go ahead and continue painting some of this foliage type now notice I'm using a circular brush this time and it's really really small it's actually about size 50 which is I rarely do that but uh, I decide to I'll place them in very very uh, small in, in the very small areas really and again it's not really working because in my in my landscape this is for my all my grass types I have to do the same thing like I did with the fern 01 just switch my sample to false so that way it does not spawn the pre previous fern and you can see that now it's spawning all of these uh, new type of vegetation but I am looking for another a particular plant that I don't see here being spawned so I'm gonna go ahead and play a little bit of the collision radius and shade radius and now you start noticing that they, these plants are appearing and again if you do see me go through the landscape and you see the ocean that's what's happening since I have the ocean underneath of it but here's a quick look at it uh, I think it's turning out pretty good and uh, you can see that it's spawning right on top of that fern foliage which is really really nice but again in the future I might just spread them out a little bit more uh, but I do like the result of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change back to my alpha brush that I always like to use and I am increasing the radius to about 350 so that way it's a little bit bigger and It will cover most of the landscape here. You can see that I have a lot of available area to be painted on with this uh, foliage type. I'm gonna go ahead and populate this Again, I have a lot of shaders being compiled since I have not used this particular material in these sections of the landscape, uh, which again is really nice that it doesn't have to recompile uh, the shaders for the entire landscape, only sections of it. So that way it doesn't have to uh, take forever for it to compile. But again, this video is sped up about four times, uh, so that way you don't have to wait for it to reappear either. And again, I'm starting to notice that there's a lot of areas uh, where I have leaves for banana trees are not 100% painted. We'll definitely cover some of those as well. Uh, those root trees that I have painted, I don't really like the color of it. It's really a little bit lighter on the color compared to the other stuff that I have here. And I might keep those. Maybe I'll have to paint over just a little bit with other vegetation on top of it. Or I'll switch it to a different type of root system that I'll be creating later as well. But I do like the look of it already. It's uh, definitely getting a little bit more dense on the vegetation part. And I, the only one thing I don't like is how bright those plants are. And that can be adjusted later. I will be probably changing the albedo color uh, of this material or the actual plant for my foliage type. I'm probably going to have to go into the mesh and darken some of those leaves or maybe even randomize them so that way they don't look all exactly the same even though they have uh, different rotations different scales and different angle pitches it's still uh, relatively the same and i figured if i add, start adding a little bit more of a color to it it would um, make it a little bit more um, vast and different variations of the same exact plant so I'll, I'll definitely work with that sometime later and this is definitely not a priority but definitely trying to keep that in mind and again I'm considering starting writing down all the things that still needs to be fixed uh, visually I can see it uh, but uh, not always remembering it so 
I think this is where it comes to start writing down things that needs to be changed or fixed later down the road. Um, again, like Clover, for example, is one of the areas that still needs to be covered, uh, which we'll, I'll get to later. And I'm going to do a quick run through here. Uh, again, I still have not figured out why my recording program is skipping through some of the frames when I'm running with the character. I don't know if it's dropping the frames when I do it, but when I do play the game, it's running really smooth. I have no issues whatsoever. For some reason, when the recording is done, uh, this is what happens here. But at least you get a chance to uh, see some of the vegetation um, in a paused, I guess, frame. But again, I'm just trying to see how the vegetation lays and the transitions between this type of vegetation and all the other materials that I've been painting. And you can go through all this vegetation. As of right now, it's not colliding with the character. Uh, something like that, I'll definitely have to work as well and make it so that way you can go through it. Uh, add some sound effects that would be really really nice to add that feature in the game as well for all different types of vegetation they will have their own different sounds and depending if you're running or crouching you know the sound will vary in the volume sound and possibly some of those areas will contain a different insects and bugs and even animals uh, again since this is a really small island when it comes to adding AI and uh, different type of animals and other creatures. I will start probably with something that's really, really small. Uh, for, for example, will be some sort of insect or bugs and then maybe even, you know, like butterflies and ants and things like that for my uh, mounts, for the termite mounts. Maybe I'll, you know, have some termites there and things like that. And then then we'll start expanding to a fish and marine world and things like that. And when it comes to a bigger landscape island, uh, there I will start adding better or not better but uh, more of a variation of other animals like farm animals and things like that since it's a very small island there is really no way you'll have <laughs> a farm animals on this island unless they come from the shipwreck that i've created earlier but unfortunately they're not part of that story so that's going to be covered later and uh, so far uh, the starting look pretty cool i, I like the fern how some of that stuff is actually almost as high as the character again some of the vegetation is going to be even taller than the character uh, which is one of them that i have here is reeds and another one that i'll be adding in the future will be bamboo uh, but that's going to be for more of a bigger landscape maybe i'll add some of it a little bit here and bamboo is going to be one of the major resources as well to for construction and again all these uh, trees going to be converted probably to blueprints as well so that way I can create different functions for it where you, when you cut down the trees collect resources and things like that uh, especially like banana trees uh, you will notice that those banana trees do have bananas on them but they're not functionable this is just a mesh I'll have to separate that as well where you'll be able to collect them uh, again some of those fruits like coconuts and bananas they will and mangoes and whatever might be growing on the trees, how they will be either available for you to collect by you know, trying to knock them down or cut the trees down or they automatically will fall depending on the time of, of the season and things like that in the future that where I'll be able to implement that. It will be really nice to be able to see that and have different variations of possibilities really. Let's go ahead and re-simulate this and do a quick fly through to see what I have painted so far. I'm going to go ahead through this valley that has these giant stones coming up and looking to see how close some of this vegetation is spawning to other objects like those big rocks and actual trees themselves. I will try to get some of them as close as possible but at the same time to make sure that they're not protruding. Again if it's a, a bush it's no big deal. It would be really nice to cover some of that empty area and by zooming out I can see that this entire area of the landscape is mostly beach and that means I'll be adding some stone on one section or one area in the back where the reeds are and again every time I try to fly through this uh, it's kind of skipping through frames here but we'll be adding 
more of that stone that I've, I've spoke about and as of right now it's 2d image but we'll be adding some real stone on top of it I've uh, already imported these projects into my uh, level here but I haven't actually set them up yet or anything like that and I will be adding all of the stone around bigger structures if you look close enough you'll see that some of that stone is being painted around those 3d meshes that i have here for the stone as well and it's going to be a combination between mossy rock and some of the rough rock as well I'm trying to keep uh, different combinations of different rock formations because it's going to use a procedural box as well one thing i'm trying to get rid of is the sand that's in the center of the landscape i don't really need that much sand in those areas i'll try to keep it a little bit cleaned up and speaking of cleaning i'm gonna go ahead and clean up a little bit of this area that has reeds uh, first i'm gonna paint a little bit more of that vegetation that i just now created since i don't have any in this area and i try to cover most of the landscape for each of those so i don't want to go back to them but sometimes i do miss the areas so i have to come back and try to play some of it pretty much through the entire landscape so that way it feels like it's uh, one section like a, a, a one biome on through the entire landscape except for of course for these reeds these reeds are currently spawning inside the mesh and I'm, I think it's because I had them painted uh, where the rocks are and I think not only that possibly those reeds have been set up to be spawned on top of the mesh so let's go ahead and clean that up I'm gonna just paint some mossy rock underneath of it so you won't really even see it but it is there it's under the mesh and it shouldn't really spawn anything uh, that's involved with reeds and yeah, you can see that it says allow BSP in static mesh I'm gonna go ahead and on click that and click or simulate so now we see that the reeds are not spawning there anymore uh, of course one other thing that I will be changing later is the height of those uh, reeds they seem a little bit way too high but I'll get to that later uh, as of right now I'm just trying to clear up this section because I'm gonna have uh, mostly rocks uh, being spawned here and I think it's gonna be done later in the other videos but I do want to see if that uh, foliage type will grow here but unfortunately I think it's way too close to the area so I'm just gonna use some sand and I'll make it a little bit more of like a sandy area with the reeds and a little bit of a stone uh, I've noticed that there's nothing actually happening behind the stone and it's just a little bit too overcrowded with some of the materials so I'm gonna go ahead back and add a little bit more sand in certain areas that's been painted since uh, so again sometimes it's hard to control and just want to jump back and forth between painting those layers all right so the new one uh material that i'm adding is not actual material but the new procedural box is going to be the termite mount and this one right here is what i spoke about for the termites uh, living on the island with different type of mounds i have about six of them and well actually the other six i think they're like closer or open areas for at the top of it I uh, have to still look into it a little bit more but I'm going to be using another procedural box for this and I'm going to be setting them up just as I did with the foliage type I'm going to be adding it to procedural foliage in the world outliner as well pretty much the same settings as everything else uh, I just don't want to go overboard with this the height is going to be above the ocean which is 1560 and I'll have to add this to sand debris underscore O2, which is this sand right here with leaves and a bunch of other debris that's in it. I'm going to change some of the collision radius, shade radius, and uh, the, sh the number of steps I'm going to be set to one, uh, but I can ch actually change that because I will change the height variations of this as well. Uh, procedural scale is going to be one to three for now, so pretty much everything almost at. Um, original now I did set it up to cool distance 8000 which is really really high I will be changing that later and here is my result uh, it's starting to look pretty cool that we're now adding different stuff to the la landscape itself not just the vegetation let's go ahead and rotate that y value to back to zero since it's a 
the box is a little bit off so I'm gonna go ahead and copy again everything and from the location and scale to the termite mount from like the jungle or fern whichever I can use up and again this is just for testing purposes I will probably downsize this procedural box I don't personally recommend using an enormous procedural box for the entire landscape because there's so many possibilities that you can create when you create a smaller size procedural box but uh, let's go ahead and try to run to this area and see if we can find some of these termite mounds here's one right here closer to the water I don't know if it's way too close to the ocean or not but maybe we can increase the height later but I do like how four of them just spawning and they're even interacting with one another and some of those are even growing right next to not growing but being spawned next to the tree which is really really cool and since they're made out of dirt and mud it's okay for it to be colliding with each other or even trees just because it seems natural to me but uh, I don't know where they have been spawned so I'm just trying to run around and see what I can find and again it's really unfortunate that it skips frames even though when I record this it's at perfect condition but so far I think I found five or six uh, areas and the way it's gonna work is uh, you can actually use uh, soil materials for construction purposes to enchant your uh, structures and things like that so when you mix it like with sand and aggregate and water and things like that uh, you'll be able to actually use that material to build structures or you know mud buildings or whatever you can come up with however you gotta also keep that in mind that those termite mounds are rare and they will not be respawning as quick as you'd expect them to since it will take some time for the termites to rebuild those again um, I'm trying to build a game in a way where the resources have more of a value and they're not easy to come by. Therefore, you'll either have to use what is available on that island to build the structure or invest some time into collecting those resources and building what you're trying to build. So, again, once there is going to be more landscape to play on, a bigger island uh, there is going to be more resources available and more of these thermite mounds uh, but uh, before i go any further on that i'll have to make sure that it's functional that i can have actual termites running around and things like that maybe they can even attack and bite you if you're trying to get to it i don't know i'll have to do some more research into it how much of a damage they can really do to a person but maybe they can you know sw swarm uh, certain areas of fallen fruits and if you don't pick it up on time maybe they'll eat that and you know things like that uh, where they need resources as well just like you would and pretty much anything that you interact with nature it will have some sort of impact and effect on it so if you kill an animal it will not respawn it will simply have to be uh, born uh, by having other species around it or you know the same species that is still alive so if you kill a fish it's not going to just randomly respawn it will respawn after a certain period of time uh, by laying eggs and whatnot and therefore it takes time for it to reproduce the reproductive system is going to be very slow as well so that way don't go on mayhem here and try to just kill everything in your path but if you do that it will be an option but uh, it will have some sort of consequences for it just go like it goes for the trees as well and the plants if you're to chop down all the palm trees and all the trees that are, are on the la landscape or this island you will no longer have any fruits growing on them that's one and two you will be able to place new ones to grow but it's going to take some time for it to grow and it's not going to be like a day or two where they just magically respawn and grow so it's going to be taking some time for it to happen and again uh, you there will be a farming system uh, very heavily involved in growing your own food and once you move on to a bigger landscape once you start meeting other tribes and factions you will be able to trade food and resources with them so that's going to be more of a your food supply and since it's going to be a plane crash you will have more food there as well for a very short time but that will be your first priority uh, food supplies and it's going to be very uh, scattered and rare but again once it's gone you'll have to pretty much rely on the island itself 
So let's go ahead and place some more of these rock formations. I'm actually using a different type of brush now. Uh, this is alpha brush, but it has, I'm using a red channel and you notice it's more of in like a shape of a Y shape. And I like this one because it almost hugs around all the stone that I'm placing around and all the vegetation that I have. You will see that it has automatic rotation but what I like about it, it uh, is not a, in a straight line or a circle or anything like that. It literally kind of wraps around the items that I want to use. And here I've set up some crates, uh, material landscape, but it's very repetitive. So I tried to minimize these water puddles because in the future I want to use this area for reeds as well. And I figured they'll be close to the shoreline in certain areas where there's lots of stone and things like that, but they're going to be in very uh, minimum amount rather than like I had earlier. And those are going to be usually used for ponds uh, somewhere in the center. But as of right now, this landscape is way too small for having uh, ponds and waterfalls and rivers and lakes and things like that. But I will have them in the future, uh, other uh, landscapes, areas, locations and things like that. But here I will be focusing again on more on adding some stone. Uh, this one right here is one of, I think, like many that I have, but I'm using about three. So I have Rock Cliff uh, 01, I believe, uh, Mossy Rock 2, uh, Rock Rough 01 and 2 as well. So I have about four different rock formations that I'm using just for this landscape. And uh, again, the numbers are numbered or these materials are numbered in a such way just because I have other ones that are not listed in here and not being used until further in the game development. So I'm going to set up more of those rock formations because I will be adding a procedural foliage to them as well. And what I've noticed about this particular material type is that it's better to place your vegetation material landscape first and then add those rocks on top and afterwards go back and add more of that vegetation material on top of it so it kind of looks like it's growing or, or the vegetation is growing between those rock formations so, so when you play with these uh, brushes you will start noticing how they blend in together differently depending on the material landscape and depending on which one you have placed first, uh, you'll start noticing you're creating a completely different variation of the look that you, you're going for. And uh, this mossy rock is being used not only on the lands and on the island itself, but also in the water. Because when you do zoom in and look close at it, it kind of also uh, reminds me of the seaweed itself. So I've been trying to use the same landscape material for entire area really and again I'm trying to get them to certain areas where there's more shade for the moss to appear like in this area right here there's going to be more of a mossy rock formations since it's really dark and moss usually likes to grow in a shading shaded areas uh, now it doesn't mean that if you are to cut down a tree it will automatically disappear though something really cool feature to have in the future uh, but that's just something comes to my mind to think about. And again, I'm trying to avoid having all this sand everywhere. Since I already have lots of it in the ocean, uh, I will have some sort of areas, more of like a little pathways, uh, patches of sand appearing there. But I don't got to be too crazy. Again, I'm trying to make it more of a dense jungle rather than anything uh, else. And blending this in between the vegetation is not as easy as other ones because you can't really place that in the areas that I have let's say those leaves that are have been fallen I, I do put them around it but not really on top of it unless I really really need to but areas like this uh, I'll have to place those rock formations down first and then go back and add leaves on top of it uh, since the leaves have fallen after the rocks have appeared there and again, you just have to kind of think about it when you build those things. So let's go ahead and add more of this fern. Uh, again, I'm only implementing just a little bit of this rock formation, uh, this cliff formation that I've been using underwater. Kind of reminds me more of like a volcanic uh, structure. Uh, not this type of material, but the rock cliff O2 that I've been previously using. 
and rock, rock, uh, rough one is mostly used in the areas where it almost seems like there have been erosions from the rain that's washed away all the dirt and all the sand so I'll, you will see me somewhat placing them in between the vegetations and where two hills somewhat mid together and then come down which is what the erosion really is all right let's go ahead and look at the landscape up close uh, all the vegetation out of place and all the rock formations and i think i'm gonna fix just a little bit of this termite mound uh, change a couple with functions on there add a little bit of rock and then we're gonna wrap up on this video as well since i'm going a little bit over 30 minutes now I'm going to try to keep them between 30 to 40 minutes per video since uh, I have another video that's going to be under like an hour and a half and I have to try to break it down a little bit more and uh, again we're we'll just going to continue with this landscape for now before we move on back to the ocean and again I'm noticing a lot of these areas just like this that are still need a lot of work to be done where you can see that uh, very awful transition but i do like the amount of rocks starting to spawn here and i'm thinking for these mossy rocks we'll use some white stone since that's what's been painted on the landscape and for the rough rocks we'll have a little bit darker grayish stones uh, for that area as well but it won't be happening in this video i'm just simply going to go back and change a little bit some of the settings because you can see that the max angle is a little bit too small and my z offset is a little bit too high and most of my mounds are a little bit spawning a little bit too deep in the ground and you don't see all of it so i would like to re-simulate this and unfortunately it looked like the z offset was an actually okay condition and location because now it's spawning a little bit above the ground and keep that in mind this is happening due to the slope angle uh, because your pivot point is in the center of the mesh and if your angle is set a little bit too high, depending on how big your mesh is, it will protrude through the landscape. So keep that in mind. In order to fix that, you would want to change your Z value. And that happens a lot with trees. Uh, if you have trees spawning at a very high angle and it's not aligned to normal, if your pivot point is in the center of the mesh, it will spawn your tree or this termite mount right where your pivot point is but if your mesh is sticking out to the ground it's not gonna wrap around properly because it's not has been aligned to normal and i think that's what i need to do with the termite mound uh, but the palm trees i don't well, not palm trees but any trees really that you use i don't really recommend doing that unless they're smaller trees and yes some trees do grow well actually all the trees grow toward the sun but if they're on the mountain usually they all grow straight up forward uh, some of them, of course, do grow sideways, and I just don't recommend going overboard with that. But if you do, just keep in mind when you do align to normal, that's what it does. It will align your pivot point to your landscape angle. And uh, I have not used that on any of these trees here. I only use it for vegetation, since it's really, really small, and you want the vegetation to wrap around the landscape. So definitely keep that in mind as well. And I am fixing some of these leaves. Uh, I've noticed that they are a little bit too bright and missing in certain areas. And these banana trees will be replanted by hand, but at least I'm painting over the areas where I believe those leaves would fall. And I know there are very um, clear, like th there's really nothing else but the leaves on it, which is totally fine. Again, I'll add some dead branches and maybe even uh, a decals of the leaves on the ground or maybe even meshes i'm not 100 sure how i'm gonna go about that but i think decals would work for that to bring in that 3d feel to the landscape itself but that's not going to be done for a while i'm just simply trying to finish up with some of these rock formations and call it a day i think it's quite a lot of it that still needs to be worked on for the rock formations because I do want to add some cliffs here in the future and using the landscape uh, tools for sculpting didn't really work out too good for me just because uh, when I zoom in and bring the landscape close back to 
my screen. It changes the shape of it for whatever reason. I still haven't figured out how to fix that. But I will be adding more rock formations like 3D models from uh, MegaScan, Quixel. It just takes a while for me to import them since I don't actually have Quixel supported on my engine. But that being said, I hope you guys like this video. I will be working more with this in the next video. And as always, I want to thank everybody for supporting my channel. Thank you for all the views and welcome all new subscribers. Don't forget to leave a comment if you have anything to add to what I'm working on, any suggestions or any concerns. And definitely I'm welcome with all the tutorials that you guys can provide me with and for any issues that I talk about in my video. And of course, don't forget to click the notification bell button to be notified every time I upload a video, so you'll be the first one to see it. Just keep that in mind, the translations for the videos will not be available for the first 24 hours to maybe 48 hours for those particular languages that I've listed, uh, but they will be available as soon as I can get them done. That being said, I will see you in the next video.